Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. So a few videos back, I made this beautiful white opal onyx piece. Now it's hard to see the interference because I'm not outside and or it's not by a window, but you can see it there a little bit. Um, there we go. So I did this piece and in the comments area, I got a bunch of people asking me to do a black opal piece. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And also in the comments area was somebody that, uh, sorry, I can't remember your name, but I told her I would address this in a video. She tried to do this technique using Liquitex pouring medium, which I said you can use, and she had issues with cracking. So here's the deal. Off camera, I actually did another one of these, just the acrylic pouring portion to show, um, not to show, with Liquitex pouring medium, okay? Here's the big key. Consistency, my friends, it matters. When I did this first one here, and I have mentioned this in this video too when I did it. When I did this first one here, I was using Vivid Enamel for my pouring medium. This base is much thicker than this base. So if you were to take these pigments here and mix them in this base, and then I used white also, which is a tube paint or a soft body paint, which is much thicker than a dry pigment, I had to add a little bit of water to get them to the right consistency. Had I used Liquitex pouring medium, I would not have used any water because this is very thin compared to this. And these have no body whatsoever to them when you mix them into your product that you're using. So if you're using a product like pouring medium that's a lot thinner than something like a Vivid Enamel, then you don't want to use water because you're going to have too thin of a paint and it's going to kind of just spread out and do all kinds of, of crazy things. So if you're using pouring medium to do this technique that I'm doing today and dry pigments, do not use water in the pouring medium colors. Only use it in your tube paint colors if you need it, which you most likely will need a couple of drops. You want your tube paint colors to match whatever these two products feel like in the cup. So when you mix up your tube paint, if it feels a little thicker, add water until it feels like these two products mix together in the cup, okay? Here's one I did. I have not resined this yet. This was just a quickie to show you um, with Liquitex pouring medium. And you, again, not resined. And my cat decided to step in it while it was wet and sh off. So... <laughs> I got a big old mess on this canvas, but I just wanted to show you, see that there's no cracks. Yeah, there's bumps and stuff from me wiping this out and whatever. I I use clumpy white paint. That's not the point. The point, point is it dried fine and that's not a crack. That's just texture there. You can see with the pouring medium that it would work. Okay, so do... What I said with, if you're going to use this, don't use water with any of the dry pigments because it's thin enough. But today now, we're going to do a black piece. Now, I like using the Vivid Enamel because I like the body on it. Liquitex pouring medium for me is just like a little bit too thin. I like the body on this stuff. So what I'm going to do just like the last video is I'm going to mix all of my colors into this. Let's get rid of this for now. All of my colors into this will make a beautiful piece of black opal art. So the colors I'm using today are all interference colors from Color Art. I have red, blue, violet, green, and gold. And then I have the abalone shell which is a beautiful rainbow sparkle interference. So into each of these cups, I'm just going to add about, I don't know, maybe a quarter cup of this Vivid Enamel. Again, if you want to follow along with 
Liquitex pouring medium, you're going to do the same except no water, okay, for the, the dry pigments. So just a quarter of the cup, and then I'm going to make opaque black, and I'll show you how to do that. And it doesn't have to be exact. Take some of your powder. This is very, very simple to do. This happens to be interference violet, I believe. Okay. If you feel like it's not mixing in, you could literally put like two drops of water just to help it dissolve a little bit. Maybe four. <laughs> Again, I'm using the enamel, so it's thicker. Therefore, I can get away with using a little bit of water. Okay, and that's it. That's how I'm mixing all of these interference colors, just like that. Let me show you this violet, what it looks like. So it looks white and then there you go, okay? So let me mix up the interference colors and then when I come back, I'll show you the black. So I put some Vivid Enamel in two cups. I made my black paint, but I wanted to test to see if I could add a little bit of black at a, at a time if I can get some kind of a translucent looking black, but it just wasn't working. I was hoping with that really clear base that I could do it, but it was still just too opaque. So I ended up dumping that little cup into the big cup and just making one big cup of black. All right, so I mixed up some black for the base. We're gonna put that down first. And then I'm going to show you the difference between uh, the white and the black background or base coat. So last time, because I was using white as my base, I just poured the interference colors down first. This time I need to put down some black base coat first so that they have that dark background behind them. Okay. So we're just going to do that. Just like that. I hope I made enough here. Geez, I don't know if I made enough. Hmm. I don't think I made enough. <laughs> That's right. We'll get it there. Okay, so I'm not worried about the sides right now. We'll deal with those after. I'm going to take my colors, and just like last time, I'm going to kind of just ploop them in there so that there's a little bit of each color. All over the canvas, okay? Just like that. So you're just gonna lay down all of the colors. There's really no rhyme or reason or a right way to do it. You just kind of just plop them down there. I do notice making puddles with kind of like tails attached to them. When you blow it out, they tend to blend together better, but essentially you can put them down any way you want. the abalone. E. <laughs> 
I don't know why I always forget to say the E on the end. I know it's called abalone. All right, there we go. So now, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. If you watch right here, you see how much darker that got? Here, let's try this side. Once I blow it around with the blow dryer, you're going to see a lot more of it. So just blend them together. That's all. Just blend. So now what we'll do is we will take some of our black that we reserved and shriek it through, or you can just leave it like that, like a burst. Um, totally up to you. Again, this is all totally optional. I'm just doing this to show you what the colors look like with a black base. All right, so first I'll show it to you this way. Now, again, it's not going to be impressive until you have a coat of varnish, resin, or some type of sealant on it. That's what really brings, you know, colors like this to life. Yeah, they're pretty on their own, but just adding that, that layer of shine, there's just no substitute for it. So now, clutch your pearls, put on your sunglasses, and hang on because I'm about to turn the flash on. Look at that. And essentially that's what your painting looks like when you have resin on it and, you know, there's a little bit of light shining on it. Oh, it's just heavenly. Look at that. So there's the difference. I'll show you the other one again really quick on the white background. And you let me know in the comments which ones you like better. Do you like the white better or the black? See that beautiful blue? Now you would think I used blue and purple paint in this painting, and I didn't. Those are all interference pigments. So you can get them through my link in the description with a discount from Color Art, 20% off. I do know some of you like to order through Amazon. I also have them on Amazon, but just remember, if you order any color art products on Amazon, you cannot use a discount code. And they don't qualify for Prime, so you don't get free shipping. So in my opinion, you're better off getting them through the website because you're saving at least the 20% off. All right, so there you go. And here is the white. So it's a much more softer look to it. But I will show you this with uh, resin on if it dries before I leave for Florida. Okay, I'll show you this one with resin on. Look at that sparkle, boy. Woo-wee! 
makes my heart sing. So thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please click like, please subscribe, please comment, and please share. Check out the description for the information on the products that I use in the videos, ways to get in touch with me if you should need to do so, and upcoming class in August. You still have a two days for, well, I don't know when this video is coming out, so you may not have time for the Florida class, but August 6th, Dallas, Texas. Information is in the description. And again, if I have time to show this with resin on it at the end, I will show it to you. If not, I promise when I get home from Florida, I will show it to you. But if I was able to do it, you're going to see it right now. I love you all. And until the next time, happy pouring.